Are you guys excited? Yeah! 120,000 people here over this weekend. Yeah! Let's have a round of applause for the makers, everybody here. It's amazing. Now, I, I, have, a, I have a little talk that I want to give, uh, and then I'd like to take some questions from the audience until they drag me back down in here and take me back into the ocean. Um, in the past on this stage, I've exhorted you guys to fail better, to do the thing you can't not do, to stay obsessed. And these are all nice words, but, but what practical value do they have coming from me? I have been incredibly lucky in my life. What is the practical reality facing young people entering the wider world and making and wondering what they can do with making? The practical reality is that the jobs market is a tough one. Finding a job that feeds you creatively is even harder. The middle class is disappearing and the competition is fierce. I have no idea how good each of you are individually as makers. I don't know what skills you have or are capable of learning. But I have advice. I have advice about how you can improve yourself, be employable, find a job you love, get noticed and get better jobs that you love. And it's really this simple. Work hard and work smart. Work hard and work smart. When you think of working hard, you probably think about pushing yourself. And you're right to a point. You think about pulling all night, you think about sweating and running. And working hard is those things, but it's not as simple as sweating and running around. It means many things. First of all, working hard and working smart means being present. Working on what's in front of you solving the problem that's on the workbench, thinking about what you're doing. I'm going to be honest with you, young makers, most of your jobs, most of the jobs that you'll be doing are boring. Most of work is boring. If you think special effects is a great career, I'll tell you that 90% of it is crushingly exhausting, drilling 300 holes in something, painting 500 of something, uh, putting a million rivets in the outside of this thing wasn't fun, but people worked hard to make it beautiful. But focus, even when you're doing something boring, is not only incredibly meditative, it also actually ends up making it fun. And when you're doing this job and 90% of it is this crushingly boring stuff, how do you get to do that 10% that's really fun? You get to do it by earning the right to do it by doing the crushingly boring stuff well. Amen. Yes. <laughs> we had this... We had this this person that came to the Industrial Light Magic Model Shop. It was their first day. And uh, we sent them outside with a can of spray paint and like 150 of these little things to paint. It was just a hot day. It was awful. She came back after about an, half an hour and said, okay, I, I'm done. What's next? And her supervisor said, really? You finished them all that fast? And she said, no, I only got through about a third of them, but this is awful. I'd love something else to do. <laughs> and he said, great, you can go home. Working hard and working smart means working correctly, making sure that you're not wasting your time or, and more importantly, your employer's time. How do you do that? You know the big picture by understanding the big picture. If you're building handles for butter churners for a stage play, it matters whether they're going to be a background prop or going to be used by actors during the show every night. Your build will change according to that information. That information may be obvious to your supervisor, but not to you. How do you get that information? By asking questions. Make sure that you understand what you've been asked to do. Ask broader questions. The more you know, the more you can circumvent problems later. Now, when you start to ask questions, just like when you start any skill, you're not going to be very good at it. You're going to annoy your employer and your coworkers, wondering where the hot glue is, wondering where the paint is, where the felt is. It is a skill that you need to develop. By continually asking for clarification, eventually you'll be like, you want me to build two more of these because it's only gonna cost a couple bucks more and that would be really key in case one of the four originals breaks. When you save your employer money and time by asking a question like that, they will notice. As an employer, I would notice. Working correctly and asking questions is all about understanding the big picture. What is the big picture and how you fit into it? You know the boring thing that you're doing like 50 of on automatic pilot? 
you're there sitting there just like drilling 300 holes. It doesn't take that much brain power. It takes focus, but not that much brain power. What do you do with the extra part of your brain? For me, I sit there and I do two things. One, I'm constantly counting how fast I'm going and doing math about, are you really shining? Oh, not by purpose. Don't shine that in my face. When you're sitting there drilling 300 holes and your brain is wandering, my brain is wandering. I sit there and I count how many I'm doing. I see by the clock how, how fast it's going. And I just repeatedly do math problems about how long it'll take me to finish this project. And then I set myself little goals. Now that's kind of a meditative process. But the other thing that I do is I, I find myself wondering, okay, I'm doing this repeated action, moving my hands like this. Could I move this work to make this any faster? I start to give myself challenges. I start to wonder if I could be doing it more efficiently, more cleanly. This process is actually, again, not only meditative, but it makes my finished product much better. Working hard and working smart means collaborating. Boy, does it mean collaborating. I have seen people who would work 16 hour days to finish a job and they're killing themselves, but they don't like working with others and they refuse to ask for help. Thus, they're killing themselves needlessly and they're taking longer to finish than they should. Usually by like 30%, honestly. Collaborating is difficult. We are all so different. We each have a picture of what needs doing and collaborating makes, means making sure that we all have roughly the same picture. Jamie and I are very clearly very different. We, we both have the same thing though about building. We need to build something in our minds before we build it with our hands. So picture us, each of us like a computer, and we each have a really nice 3D rendering of something we're about to build in our heads. Uh, we need to get those to match so that when we go off and make parts separately that they'll fit each other. With computers, this is easy, just a thumb drive and the transfer is trivial. Uh, Jamie and I transfer that information through a process we call arguing. <laughs> Working with each other collaborative, collaboratively means having humility. I can't stress this enough. It means giving up your idea because a better one just came up. There's nothing there is nothing I find more boring than arguing with somebody over an idea because they want their idea to be the one that gets used, not the right idea. It means, letting, it means taking responsibility when you've screwed up. Buck passers, people who are never at fault. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always something else. The sun was hot. Somebody was there. The dog ate that page. It's not my fault. Buck passers are in my mind lazy thinkers. They may be working really hard, but I have no use for someone that can't take the blame when they've messed up. Take the blame, move on, it's not that important. Working hard and smart means communication. On one level, that simply means keeping your supervisor apprised of how your work is going, but it also means letting them know if it's going in a direction they might not expect. Let them know that the threads for that hose they handed you don't match the threads of the pipe that you think your piece is attaching to. If you're wrong, you've wasted 30 seconds of their time. If you're right and you say nothing, you've wasted hours or maybe days. If you're right and you say something, they'll remember that. It means communicating with the others that you're working with. Are they waiting on your parts? How long will they wait? Boy, something smells good. It's like baked grease with sugar. I love fairgrounds. <laughs> Can you save time by taking one of, your, one of your collaborators' tasks and weaving it into your production? You'll never know if you don't discuss it. Working hard, I want to stress, does not mean working the fastest. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to put some hustle in your step, and I can't stand somebody who's on their way to do something who's surfing the web while they're walking over to do it. Yeah. It does, yeah, if you're going to surf the web at work, hide, please. It does mean being attentive and ready, but being the fastest doesn't gain you anything if rushing is your only goal. Simple rushing leads to mistakes, and mistakes slow you down far more than slowing down does. Working hard and smart means finishing. Means finishing the job that you started. Your goal shouldn't be just to do the thing that's in front of you times 50. It means finishing all 50. You have no idea how rare the employee is that can take a simple task and deliver it completed a couple of hours later. All right? 
When I find a finisher, I really make sure to keep them around as long as I can. Also, working hard and smart doesn't require actually being smart. This is, this is something that took me a while to get. There's a difference. I'm not saying that you should be dumb. I'm not saying that being smart is a liability. What I'm saying is that being smart is not nearly enough. I was a smart kid. I picked up a lot of things really easily, and I learned them quickly. And I actually believed in my late teens that this would mean that things would get handed to me easily. Oh, I want that job. I'm smart. They would probably give it to me. I was wrong. <laughs> If you lukewarm the performance of your job, no matter how smart you are, no one will notice. I was in my mid-20s before I truly understood what it meant to bust my ass and be proud of the work that I was doing and finish what I started. And I consider that delay of five or six years to be one of my true regrets in life. It is more important to work hard than to be brilliant. Brilliant is good, but it's not enough. As an employee, you might not feel like your supervisors know what you're doing. As an employer, I can tell you that if you're working hard and smart like I've outlined, they notice. People who work hard like that are hard to find. People who work hard like that inspire everyone around them to work harder. People who work hard like that enjoy their work more and they enjoy working well with others. People who work hard like that save time and money and thus become invaluable. When I find people like that, I keep them employed as long as I can. And not to say that all employers are the same. Some may not notice. There are places that don't want you to know the big picture. And I've been told to shut up when I was asking those questions. Don't work for those people. There are places that don't care about the quality of the work that you're doing. Don't work for those people. There are places that don't care how hard you work or want to bust your ass simply for the sake of it. Don't work for those people either. I'm not saying that any of this is easy. In fact, it's absolutely the opposite. But I'm saying that working hard and smart means that your work will be more satisfying, you will advance faster, and you will enjoy the work that you're doing and you'll do better work. That's my speech today.